Valheim has a lot of mechanics and secrets that are hard to notice, even for experienced players. Therefore, I decided to compile them in one video. This is Aiming for Gaming, and today I'll show you 65 advanced tips that will improve your Valheim experience. All tips are grouped by their purpose for easy navigation, so let's start with the resources. Stack Breaker or Iron Sledge can be used for prospecting. It's a way to find hidden treasures. In meadows, such treasure is usually hidden near gravestone-like formations. If you smash the ground and find a number different from zero, keep smashing and you'll get your reward. In the swamp biome, prospecting can be used to find muddy scrap piles. Just seek for a zero number, and if there is nothing above the ground, then it's probably a muddy pile. You can mine it using the simplest antler pickaxe and get to the Iron Age before even killing the Elder. It is also possible to find silver veins without wishbone using prospecting. A stack breaker attack will trigger a too hard message if a vein is nearby. It may take a while, but as a result you will get to the silver age before killing bone mass. Bosses and trolls can farm resources for you quickly, even resources you are not ready to harvest yet. You can place floors and attach ladders to trees with gug to collect it instead of watching how it falls down and sinks. Processing buildings continue to operate while you're skipping time sleeping. This applies to plants growing, smelting, coal processing and so on. So, after waking up, you can get the fully processed items. Food bonuses remain though. Both tree cutting and mining are more efficient from higher ground. The visible part of a copper node is much smaller than the node itself. There is a lot of copper underground. You can use script walls for your workbench setup. Simply add two roofs and the workbench will become operable. During your crypt farm, use antler pickaxes as they can be repaired using the workbench you placed nearby. Placing a campfire in the crypt gives you a 3 comfort level, enough to get a 10 minute rested bonus. If you are having trouble finding mushrooms or other plants, you can lower the vegetation quality settings and find them easily. Reveal the whole silver deposit to easily break it in several swings. It's much faster than farming it chunk by chunk. There are many birds around that can be killed for feathers. Simple wooden arrows cost only wood, so they are perfect for farming feathers that way. Shortling spawns in the swamp are a good way to obtain shortling cores, as the enemies are pretty weak and are killable using a bow or sword. Grey dwarf nests can be used as an infinite source of wood, stone and grey dwarf ice. Now let's talk about terrain tips. You can obtain previously unreachable items from the underwater areas near the shore by placing a workbench and rising the ground below it. The item will initially disappear and then respawn on top of the raised ground. You can even create natural walls using a hoe, which are indestructible. If you find yourself surrounded by enemies, placing a workbench and ascending to higher ground using a hoe can save your life. In some situations, trapping yourself inside the building allows you to safely shoot enemies as long as they are not big enough to destroy the building in one or two swings. You can point to the lowest part of a dirt wall to slowly descend and destroy the entire chunk of dirt above you, saving you a lot of time. This is especially useful against tar pits, as your trenches will soak up all the tar liquid, revealing much more tar that was hidden underneath. Next we'll run through some building tips. You can build on trees or mountains, as vertical surfaces also provide support. The color of an element shows you the current stability, allowing you to plan how many more elements you can attach. The blue color indicates that the part is directly supported by the terrain or grounded, and is essentially 100% stable. For more complex structures, consider using iron beams, as they can support a lot more than other beams. You can find natural maypoles in abandoned villages in the meadows. They work the same as seasonal ones, so you can build a base around them and get comfort bonuses. Having several furniture types that provide comfort in one room will give you a neat 25 minutes of rested bonus. There is no need to have all your furniture in one room for a comfort bonus. For example, your bedroom might be above the throne room and you will still reach it for a comfort bonus. Making a dedicated portal room will speed up your traveling and save you from renaming mistakes. Science will help you determine what is in the storage box or where the portal is leading to. You can place trophies near portals as an alternative to science. You can also sit to access lower parts of your buildings. By the way, clicking the like button on this video will show me that you enjoyed it. It's very important to me and motivates me to make more guides for you. Time to talk about battle tips. Serpents spawn not only at night, but also during the rain. Kill serpents near the shore to get their scales and reduce your chances of sinking if you make a mistake. 
Stamina and healing potions work well in emergencies when you need to block something, run away or handle one more blow. Add gear would allow you to kill enemies in creeps without being attacked back. You can use fireplaces in burial chambers to get a rested bonus and also kill enemies, but don't place too many fires to avoid the smoking debuff. If you are surrounded by enemies in burial chambers, you can return to the entrance and stay safe. You can also hide behind pillars here to avoid being attacked by skeleton archers. Headgears are the easiest weapons for fights against multiple opponents. Jumping cancels forsaken power usage if you accidentally press the activation button. Press R to quickly equip or unequip your weapon and shield. It might save your life as the shield reduces your movement speed or make you ready for your fight faster. Sometimes it's a good idea to let enemies fight each other and kill those who remain. Now let's check out transporting tips. It is possible to traverse the mountains quickly by using occasional stones or a hoe as a pit stops to replenish your stamina. You can specify the amount of resources you want to split, which is useful when you only want enough resources for one portal or the maximum amount of allowed ores before becoming overweight. If you find a trader, he sells an item called Megan Yard that increases your maximum weight limit by half from 300 to 450. Ships are the best way to transport ores for building or storing in one mega base, as they cannot be teleported. In other cases, it's simpler to build a temporary base where you can smelt ores and craft weapons and armor that can be teleported. It's much easier to use a cart to transport resources from deposits to your base or ship. A fully packed cart may be slow, but it's better than making 30 round trips. Using a cart in the mountains is also a great way to quickly descend while covering silver or dragon eggs. To speed up transporting via cart, especially in swamps, use a hoe to create paths. Our next topic is taming. You can make a terrain cage using a pickaxe to trap wild animals such as logs and not worry about them destroying your base. An abyssal harpoon is an easy tool that can help you move the animals into the cage. For smaller animals like boars, you can use simple fences as they won't break through them. You can place a taming zone near your base where you spend most of your time. This way your animal will become tamed in the background. Now let's move on to exploration tips. Always have enough resources to build a workbench and a portal during your travels. Place one portal in your base with a blank or unique name to automatically connect it with a fresh portal you make. You can collect barley and flux from fooling villages without fighting by using a rear of effect attacks to collect them while running between their farming plots. Bring the materials necessary to build a ship to save time on round trips. All the materials needed for shipbuilding are teleportable. Repair your ship by placing a temporary workbench on the nearest shore. If you need more light in dark areas, the Dwerger circlet from the trader is just what you need, but keep in mind that it replaces your helmet. Finally, let's talk about farming tips. You don't need to wait for each plant to grow separately, just make a farm base and check it after your long-lasting journey. All plants will grow fully simultaneously. If you want more easy designs that do not rely on after planting, consider a square that perfectly fit 25 crops. Start with corners and always add a plant to the middle of each line until you place all 25. You can also collect crops faster by using a rear of effect attacks of weapons such as edge gears or two-handed axes. And that's it for today. If you want to watch more guides, consider subscribing, as I have many on my channel and you won't miss any by doing so. I hope you have achieved what you are aiming for today. Thank you all for watching and see you later!